Uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, my paper will be, in fact, uh, something like a collection description of sources, which we can find in a serial royal inscription regarding crimes, criminals, traitors, sinners, uh, and all other bad people who are not very well seen in Assyria. So, first of all, we should look to the role of the king and the role of the Assyrian Empire as a state and a person who can keep criminals away. And there we have a one inscription of Assyrian King Ashurnasirapli. At uh, that time I erected two lofty lions at the right and left of the gate of Kar Shalmaneser, my lordly city, and I named them as follows. The name of the first is a lion who probably keeps away, angry demon, unrivaled attack, who overwhelms the insubmissive, who brings success. The name of the second, which stands before the gate, is who charges through battle, who flattens the enemy land, who expels criminals and brings in good people. So everybody who could see such a winged lion at the front of a king's palace or at the front of a city gate could think twice whether I'm a criminal or I'm a good person should I enter or maybe should I keep away from the city and from the king's palace. Of course, also the royal role was keep the laws of a country and keep all the criminals and traitors away. And uh, we can let one of the Assyrian kings, Sarhaddon, speak to us. And uh, if he could speak, uh, he would say, when the god Asher, the great lord, wanted to reveal the glorious might of my deeds to the people, he made my kingship the most glorious and made my name greatest of the kings of the four quarters, made my hands carry a terrible staff to strike the enemy, and empowered me to loot and plunder any land that had committed sin, crime or negligence against the god Asher. What's the interesting thing, it should be like this, uh, the Assyrian king keeps the laws of Asher, but usually we don't find the text like they sinned against Ashur. Usually they rebelled against me, they crimed against me and did bad things against me as a king of Assyria and not against Ashur. In fact, Sarhaddon usually used this uh, expression that there was sinners against Ashur, but other kings usually used sinners against me, so sinners against the king of Assyria. There is also one text uh, where we can see a divine involvement in the punishing of traitors. This is also from Esarhaddon's times. We have a very short and simple text. At that time, Nabu Zerki Tilishir, son of Marduk Aplaidina, governor of the Sealand, that means Babylonia, who did not keep his treaty nor remember the agreement of Assyria, forgot the good relations of my father. I heard of his evil deeds while in Nineveh. My heart became angry and my liver was inflamed. I sent my officials, the governors on the border of his land against him. Furthermore, he, Nabuzer Kittilishir, the rebel, the traitor, heard of the approach of my army and fled like a fox to the land Ella. And because of the oath of the great gods, which he had transgressed because Ashur, Sin, Shamash, Baal and Nabu imposed a grievous punishment on him and they, so the gods, killed him with a sword in the midst of the land Ella. So there was a crime against divine laws and there was also a divine punishment without, of course, without any involvement of uh, the king of Assyria. So we should now look to the foreign affairs of Assyria. Assyria, from the royal inscriptions, looks like a very poor country surrounded by criminals, evil, people, traitors and all kinds of barbarian hordes who tried not to keep the laws of civilized world. So we can see at the map that in the very center of a civilized world we have Assyria and Assyria is surrounded 
by traitors, surrounded on the north, surrounded on the east and on the west, but not on the southwest because there was desert, so no traitors could be named in any royal inscriptions. So we have just traitors and desert without any traitors. We can see also some scheme of uh, Assyrian deeds against rebellions or against traitors, because if we had a rebellion anywhere in the country, there must be, of course, a war as a punishment, and this war must be ended with Assyrian victory. There is no other possibility. After Assyrian victory, usually there is an oath taken by the king of uh, this rebellious country and tribute imposed by Assyrian king uh, to this country. And then usually we have a second rebellion, sometimes this is successor's rebellion, sometimes this is just rebellion of another king of this country, and their punishment is much worse because we have again war, uh, this war is again ended with Assyrian victory, but Assyrian victory is ended with the conquest of this country, revenge and devastation of the whole country, many victims and a lot of booty taken from this country. Usually this territory is incorporated to Assyria and there is also established an Assyrian governor. And such uh, example of the rebellion we have in the land Hanigalbat. A text from the times of Adad Narari I, uh, conventional chronology 14th century BC, when Shatuara, king of the land Hanigalbad, rebelled against me and committed hostilities, I seized him and brought him to my city Ashur. I made him take an oath and then allowed him to return to his land. So we have the king Shatuara with his rebellion. After the rebellion, there is an expedition, a Syrian expedition against Shatuara. Shatuara is seized, taken to Ashur, uh, his mate to take an oath, and then he can return to his country. But then we have a second rebellion in the land of Hanigalbat, and this was rebellion of Wasashatta, of Vazashatta, son of Shatuara. So, excuse me, let me, after his death, his son revolted. So I conquered, burned, and destroyed the city Iridu and sowed salty plants over it. So nobody should ever inhabit the same place after the Second Rebellion. And bound I brought them and his possessions to my city, Ashur. There is no mention about the death of Wazashatta, and we don't know if there is no mention of his death, or maybe he was just spared, but the king should not write down the rebellion wasn't killed by him. So, in this case, we can see Wasashatta's rebellion, again a Syrian expedition, conquest of the country, burned many cities, uh, plundered palace of Wasashatta, enslaved people, and Wasashatta is also taken captivity. Another example of a second rebellion we have from the times of Shalmaneser I, uh, city Arino, a holy city founded in Bedrock, which had previously rebelled and disregarded Ashur. With the support of Ashur and the great gods, my lords, I captured and destroyed that city, and again, I sold salty plants over it, so nobody should inhabit the same place again. I gathered some of its earth and made a heap of it at the gate of my city Ashur for posterity. And in fact, this is, uh, I suppose, the only one mention of gathering the earth from the conquered land to show the effect of the conquest. We can also find an example of breaking the oath. Uh, breaking the oath, uh, it was a Mukuru of the land Temanno. He broke the oath and he rebelled against me. So, of course, I mastered my chariotry um, and so on and so forth. And uh, I inspected his property. Of course, I took everything from his palace. And that fellow, together with his brothers, I fastened in bronze clasps and I brought them to my city, Ashu. Again, there is no mention of the death of a conquered king. We can also find uh, some questionable things, uh, because we know that the tribute was a punishment for all those who rebelled against the Assyrian king, all those who are guilty. 
uh, and sometimes we can find a tribute for those who are not guilty. And here we can compare two inscriptions. First of them is Shalmaneser the first inscription. At that time, the beginning of my vice regency, land Uruat will be burnt against me. So, 51 of their cities I destroyed, burned, and carried off their people and property. I took a selection of their young men and I chose them to enter my service. And I imposed upon them heavy tribute of the mountains forever. So, the scheme is like this. Uh, we have a treachery or oath breaking and rebellion. So there is a conquest, burning, destruction and all other things. And there are wrongdoers. The wrongdoers can be enslaved and there is heavy yoke for the wrongdoers. But uh, what about rightdoers? They should not be punished. Uh, nevertheless, we can find the uh, inscription of Asarhaddon. I trod of the necks of the people of Cilicia, mountain dwellers who live in inaccessible mountains in the neighborhood of the land Tabal, evil Hittites who trusted in their mighty mountains and who from earliest days had not been submissive to the yoke. I surrounded, conquered, plundered, demolished, destroyed and burned with fire 21 of the fortified cities and small cities in their environs. And what then? And then, for the rest of them who are not guilty of any single crime, I imposed the heavy yoke of my lordship upon them. So the question is, uh, was it better to be a wrongdoer or a rightdoer? So, there is a choice between a heavy yoke or, or heavy yoke. In royal inscriptions we can find also some examples of coup d'etat. And the first is from the times of Ashwanatsir Pal II. It was the um, most dangerous king for all the rebellions, at least if we believe royal inscriptions. So, while I was in the land Katmuhu, this report was brought back to me. The city Suru, which belongs to Pithalupe, has rebelled. They have killed Hamataya, their governor, and appointed Ahia Baba, son of a nobody. So somebody who did not originate from the royal dynasty. Whom they brought from the land beat Adini as their king. I mastered my chariotry and troops and made my way to the banks of river Habur. And I captured Ahia Baba, son of a nobody, whom they brought from the land beat Adini. With my staunch heart and fierce weapons, I besieged the city. All the guilty swords were seized and handed over to me. And now we start with the best part of the inscription. I erected a pile in front of his gate. I flayed as many nobles as had rebelled against me and draped their skins over the pile. Some I spread out within the pile, some I erected on stakes upon the pile, and some I placed on stakes around about the pile. I flayed many right through my land and draped their skins over the walls. I slashed the flesh of the eunuchs and of the royal eunuchs who were guilty. I brought Ahia Baba to Nineveh, flayed him and draped his skin over the wall of Nineveh. Now oh, here, as you can see, this a coup d'etat of one of small countries who were not um, free of Assyrian domination. They tried to rebel and also exchange the ruler, so the punishment was especially grievous. But Ashurnasipal uh, was uh, that kind of a king, so we can see another Example, in the same eponymy, while I was in Nineveh, a report was brought back to me saying men of Assyria and Hulaya, their city ruler, had rebelled. They had come to capture the city Damdam Musa, my royal city. Of course, as you can say, I conquered the city. I fell with the sword 800 of their combat troops. So it was not too large combat troops, as we can see. And what next? I burned 3,000 captives from them. I did not leave one of them alive as a hostage. I captured alive Hulaya, their city ruler. I burned their adolescent boys and girls. I flayed Hulaya, their city ruler, and draped his skin over the wall of the city, Damdam Musa. And then, as usual, I raised, destroyed, and burned the city. There is also one example of holding up the ridicule as a punishment against traitors and rebellions. This is a punishment for Arab people. 
as you can see in the SR Hadass inscription, later Wabu, to exercise kingship, incited all of the Arabs to rebel against the Attah. I, Asar Haddon, king of Assyria, king of the Four Quarters, who loves loyalty and abhors treachery, sent my battle troops to the aid of Yatta. And they trampled all of the Arabs, threw Abu, together with the soldiers who were with him, into fetters and brought them to me. I placed them in neck stocks and tied them to the side of my gate. We can find sometimes uh, similar punishment uh, as enemies can be tied to the side of the gate, together with a bear, or with a dog, or even with a swine. So it is a punishment for holding up to ridicule criminals or enemies or traitors. Nevertheless, we can find some acts of grace among our texts. First of such texts, at the times of Sennacherib, and his inscription, I approached the city Ekron and I killed the governors and nobles who had committed crimes and hung their corpses on towers around the city. This is not an act of grace. Uh, I counted the citizens who had committed the criminal acts as booty, but I commanded that the rest of them, those who were not guilty of crimes or wrongdoing, to whom no penalty was due, be allowed to go free. So his son, Asarhadon, was not as graceful as Sennachery because he imposed a heavy yoke on all of those who were not guilty of a crime or punishment. And the last very unusual fragment uh, from the times of Tiglat Pileser III, let us pass the words to the king himself, I accepted their plea to forgive their sin and I spared their land. Unfortunately, we cannot say what kind of land was spared because Texas badly damaged. Probably it could be Lansimiri, but we really cannot say anything about it. So I will also spare your time and thank you very much for your attention.